Hello, Mark. Uh, thank you very much for finding a few minutes to uh, 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 tell about uh, your work uh, to our readers. Would you please uh, introduce yourself and tell a little bit about your institution? Yeah, sure. So my name is uh, Marco De Maria and uh, uh, I'm a principal investigator and assistant professor at the uh, European Research Institute for the Biology of Aging, which is an institute that is uh, completely dedicated to the study of uh, basic, me uh, basic mechanism associated to aging. Um, and this is uh, located at the University of Groningen in the Netherlands. And uh, the main uh, uh, topic is molecular biology, so we are mostly molecular biologists and several biologists with some biochemists, and uh, we work with different types of uh, organisms and uh, models to indeed tackle the problem of aging. Mm -hmm. uh, let's begin with the basics. Uh, tell us a little bit what are senescent cells and what's their role in uh, aging and age-related diseases. Yeah, uh, to describe what are senescent cells, we will stay here three hours, but <laughs> <laughs> and maybe it would not be enough and I would not be comprehensive. and. Uh, uh, and luckily, I have enough, uh, uh, you know, work to do to define what senescence is. So it's great. But uh, yeah, so senescent cells are essentially uh, associated to a state of irreversible growth arrest. So what we describe senescence uh, is normally a cell that is still uh, alive and active, but it just stops its capacity to divide. So then it's it kind of a it's a sort of frozen stage of the life of the cell. However, the cell is indeed very active, and among its activity, it's able to secrete, uh, excrete a lot of factors in the surrounding environment. And throughout these factors, it can actually modulate the environment uh, quite uh, deeply. And this is why we think that it can be associated with a number of diseases because of this uh, secretion, so this uh, modulation of the environment around it. Uh now, could you please tell us a little bit about your work, what you are focusing on right now? Yeah, so our work is uh, based on understanding what uh, is the contribution of senescence, what are the mechanisms that drive cells into senescence, how we can prevent it, but also how we can potentially eliminate senescent cells in different contexts where they are described as deleterious. And in particular, we are interested in two uh, areas. The first area is uh, cancer survivors, so what happens when um, individuals, but in our case mostly mice, uh, undergo uh, genotoxic stress, for example they uh, uh, take uh, chemotherapeutic agents or they are uh, irradiated with ionized radiation. Uh, and on the other side, the second part of the lab is actually interested to understand what are uh, uh, the roles of senescence during the natural occurrence of aging and how senescent cells contribute to the natural onset of age-related dysfunctions. And so what are the latest findings of your laboratory? So um, the, latest finding, the latest findings are uh, numerous in the sense that, of course, uh, we are on, on one side, we are very focused to uh, uh, try to identify what are the uh, pathologies that we can interfere with when we uh, modulate the senescence phenotype. And for example, one of the findings that we have, we have done is uh, to understand what uh, uh, dysfunction are caused by chemotherapy agents. And we have found that uh, if we eliminate senescent cells after chemotherapy treatment, we can uh, uh, dramatically improve the health span of uh, mice in our case. But also we have seen that the level of senescence will correlate with uh, the uh, decrease of health span in human patients which is, of course, the precursor for then undergoing potential clinical trials in this area. So this is one of the main findings that we have found. But also we are screening for, of course, new novel compounds that might, on one side, in kill senescent cells, or on the other side, prevent the accumulation of excessive senescence uh, in these uh, conditions. Uh, do you think that this kind of therapy is only applicable to patients suffering from uh, some sort of cancer or it can affect uh, other age-related diseases as well? Yeah, so no, we think that uh, essentially uh, senescence has a very broad, uh, is a very broad uh, uh, influence on the whole environment. So, um, of course, you would have an advantage in, in the sense that when you have a cancer, uh, most of the time senescence cells become somehow promoting uh, the, the, the cancer growth and, and some side effects of the therapies. So if we eliminate them, we have amelioration of the side effects. But on the other side, we know that senescent cells are present 
in many uh, different other age-related diseases. So essentially, the strategies that we are uh, understanding and, and identifying are aimed at hitting both sides. So one on the cancer therapy on the other side, also the natural occurrence of age, of, of age-related senescence. So we hope that with these strategies, we will be able to interfere with a number of different age-related pathologies at the same time. I see. Uh, in your opinion, what are the most promising therapies or lifestyle measures to eliminate senescent cells in, in, in people? Yeah, so at the moment we have, uh, uh, let's say, compiled a list of different strategies that we can uh, focus on, uh, I think, in the next uh, probably 50 years, but uh, hopefully we will find something earlier. But so, uh, indeed, on one side, what we have is to uh, interfere with senescence in the sense that we can interfere with specific uh, aspects of senescence. And in this case, we can uh, specifically inhibit the secretion of senescent cells. And these drugs are called xenomorphics because are drugs that are not eliminating or killing senescent cells, but they're just arresting part of the phenotype of senescence, which is probably the most detrimental. However, a drawback of that intervention is that a person would need to be on drug all the time, mm -hmm. because when we remove these interventions, most of the time, this secretion comes back. So we cannot really have that as a long-term uh, strategy. Uh, so to overcome this problem, of course, we have also the idea to develop senolytics, which are drugs that can specifically kill senescent cells and spare normal cells. In that case, you eradicate the problem from, from scratch. And then you should not have, or, or at least you will have, again, probably some cells that will become senescent again afterwards, but then you will give a second round of treatment. But in this case, you will have an intermittent regimen of uh, drug interventions and not a continuous uh, uh, drug uh, treatment. And then a third option, always on this side, is actually to, to uh, work on the uh, immune system, because we know that senescent cells might be normally uh, eliminated by the immune system, and something might go wrong during aging in the, in the efficiency of immunity to take care of senescent cells. So what we can also try to look for is compound drugs or strategies that would uh, uh, enhance the immunity uh, capacities with age, and that might be sufficient to then eradicate the senescent cells that are there. And um, the other strategy that we are uh, very interested in is to understand if with lifestyle interventions, you can prevent the accumulation of senescent cells. And for example, we have recently published a study where we have looked into calorie restriction, and we have shown that in, in both mice and humans, 30% uh, calorie restriction is sufficient to prevent or at least delay the accumulation of senescent cells in, in, in various tissues. So this, of course, is a very promising uh, also intervention that can be done without huge side effects. But of course, in humans, it's still very difficult to approach, especially in the long term. Um, but it's a very good proof of concept that indeed lifestyle interventions have an enormous potential to at least limit the accumulation of senescence and perhaps to delay aging and aging related phenotypes. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's uh, uh, very interesting for us to know if you are using some sort of measures to delay aging. Uh, I mean, on you myself. are using it yes, on yourself. No, I would say that I like to self-experiment, uh, but uh, not as uh, I should probably. And uh, also, I cannot disclose anything I take, I'm taking, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm not following particular restrictions in terms of food. I'm just uh, working a lot on the, uh, let's say, dietary composition, uh, which is one of also the angle that uh, my laboratory is trying to take. So not only to work on the intervention in, in terms of lifestyle and calorie restriction, but also to understand what are the nutrients that are affecting the burden of senescent cells. And also, I would say that the main intervention I do on myself is to exercise regularly. I guess this is the best advice, in fact. We all have sedentary, <laughs> For the moment, at least. Yes, sedentary lifestyle is really killing us. Um, so, w what will be your prognosis? Uh, how, uh, for instance, a senolytic therapy could affect age-related diseases, the, the risks of age-related diseases in people? Can you make um, some sort of estimate in this regard? It's very difficult. With numbers now, it's still, it's, it's still premature. So the idea is that, of course, cellular senescence is a basic mechanism of aging. And this was the original uh, concept that uh, drove so many people to now start to work on the idea of interfering with senescent cells. Because if we eliminate senescent cells and we interfere with some detrimental function of senescence, we might be able to hit many different pathologies at the same time. However, one strong limitation that we have is that, of course, we cannot go in clinical trials trying to tackle aging 
because this is not yet a real disease, and we know that aging is complex and is a collection of these functions and pathologies, which are is very heterogeneous and, and dependent on, on various factors. So it's very difficult to now put numbers and say, okay, I, I'm going to use this intervention and I'm going to look at these five or six different pathologies in a 20-year time, because there is no company uh, or no funding agency that would indeed uh, allow for that type of experimentation. So at the moment, it's very difficult to put any number. But the hope is that, of course, we could be able to, with a drug, to perhaps at least reduce the chance of getting maybe cancer and then neurodegeneration at the same time, which would be, of course, the main uh, and best scenario that we can think of. Uh, thank you. And the last question, quite a traditional one. Uh, we all will benefit from these uh, technologies to postpone uh, the diseases of the old age and so on and so forth, but sadly, the progress in research that we see is not very fast. So what will be uh, your advice? What, what are the, the main bottlenecks that are uh, holding back the research and how the community, uh, this, our society, could help the researchers uh, to overcome these bottlenecks and accelerate research? Yeah, I think it's, uh, yeah, we, we live in a system where uh, it's, it's highly competitive for scientists, especially for basic scientists, to have enough funding to, of course, do very comprehensive studies. And on the other side, one main issue is that this affects cooperation and collaborations among, among different laboratories. Um, so instead of maybe thinking, now we have already some technologies, some interventions that might work to delay aging, and we need to move forward, everybody is spending time to find new interventions that might mimic actual interventions that are already available, just because they need that to survive, to show, and to get more funding. Mm -hmm. So I think that if we had a system that would allow to have a fixed amount of uh, funding for laboratories that are productive and enforce collaborations among labs that are indeed focused on age-related uh, uh, problems, pro we would probably overcome and accelerate uh, some of the you know all issues that we have right now in terms of like moving forward what we already have as knowledge and actually as technological improvement and, and interventions available that we could you know simply just move in, in human beings but there are a lot of uh, uh, indeed uh, financial issues surrounding the uh, uh, collaborative environment that should be in research in particular in aging where Still, it's a small field that has still to be defined uh, in a very precise uh, way. I see. Well, uh, as a community, we will try to help the researchers in any way we can. As you probably know, LEAF is trying to do quite a lot to educate the public about uh, rejuvenation research. And uh, for now, we just want to wish you every success in your research. And please uh, um, make us happy with new findings. Thank you very much. I will update you soon. <laughs> Thank you.